Hey there guys. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to convert a simple image into a layered SVG cut file that you can use in software like Cricut Design Space. Okay, so I'm going to warm you guys up to um, a, a simpler image first, and then I'm going to show you something a little more complex. So all I've done here is I've gone to Google and I've just typed in mermaid clip art, and I found here this um, free mermaid tail image that I would like to convert into two or three layers to be able to use on um, a Tumblr that I'm making for my daughter and um, I want it to be multiple layers and so I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to copy it you could also save it to your computer but usually copy works just fine so just do copy come over to your Inkscape document and do you can do right click and paste or you can do control V that'll also paste it onto your canvas there in Inkscape okay so we have our image here and now we need to do what's called tracing the image and this is an automatic trace you can manually trace images in Inkscape using the pen tool which is this tool right here and that is one way to do it, but we want whatever is simplest for you and quickest. So I'm gonna show you the auto trace way. To do auto trace, make sure your image is selected. You can go up to path, trace bitmap. So up in the very top, sort of halfway over in the edit bar, you'll see path, trace bitmap. You can also open up this very simply by doing shift alt B on your keyboard. So I'm gonna also do that, shift alt B. And you should see a little panel to your right pop up here and it'll say trace bitmap so you know you're in the right spot and you're gonna have a bunch of selections here and things that you wanna set. So uh, we have brightness cutoff, edge detection, color quantization, um, brightness steps, and grade. I pretty much never use anything here except for colors. So this one right here underneath the multiple scan section, you want to make sure that that is selected and it says colors. You also want to make sure that the little boxes next to stack or stack scans and remove background are also checked. It's kind of tiny on my screen, but those are checked. You can also tick the live preview box so that you can see sort of a small preview of how it's going to convert for you. Right here where it says scans, this is how many layers it's going to scan from this image. So right now it's set to three, which means it's going to have a background, it's going to have this lighter teal and the darker teal, so that's three scans. If I wanted to move that up, it would create more scans. Now this is a very simple image. So notice as I'm moving this number higher to create additional scans, it's not changing anything in the live preview. This is because there's no additional colors for it to register. So if there was a lot more colors going on here, I would want more scans because I'd want to pick up all those colors. But since there's only a couple of colors here, we can leave it at three see how we went to two and we lost one of those colors if we go to three we get that second teal color back now i'm at four there we go Woo. three there we go so if i leave it at three that's perfectly fine so once you have all that set you've set your number of scans you've had the remove background ticked you can select the live preview so you can see what's going on make sure colors here has been what you've selected and stack scans then go ahead and hit the ok button it's gonna take a second to execute the trace. If your um, computer is running slow and Inkscape is like spinning on you and it says it's not responding, this may be because you don't have enough RAM or maybe the image is really, really big and it's just taking a long time. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure all other things are closed down on your computer. If you can close down your, your internet browsers, any other apps you have open, very important because that increases your speed of your RAM on your computer. So um, if that happens to you, just close things down except for Inkscape that you're working on and it should speed things up. So I now have my image that I just pulled off the top of my original. This is what we copied in and this is what we just traced here in the trace bitmap panel. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of my original image because it's just going to slow my canvas down. So I'm just going to delete it. Let's zoom in here a little bit. 
And now we have this. So right now, if we look at the very bottom here in Inkscape on sort of the left-hand side, you'll see that it tells us we have a group of two, object in, two objects in layer one. So that means there's actually two layers here, but we need to separate them to see how they turned out. So in order to separate them, you right click and you go down to ungroup or if you want the shorthand for your keyboard, do shift control G and that's going to ungroup them. Now in order to pull them apart, you need to first click off the image, then select a piece on top of the image and you'll be able to move it over just like that. Now we have two scans, two colors, and we were able to successfully convert that simple image from the PNG that it was to a two layer scalable vector graphic. Now I'm going to save this real quick and to save an in Inkscape you can just do control S and your file explorer will pop up or you can go down to file save as and I'm going to just save it here in my SVGs as mermaid tail tumblr project because I'm going to put this on a tumblr for my daughter and you always want to save it as an Inkscape SVG just if you're curious there's lots of different formats to save here um, like DXF if you're working with for example um, Silhouette Studio um, you can save as a DXF here as well if you are not able to load SVG files but I highly highly recommend you do the Inkscape SVG because there is more data saved in SVG files than there is DXF files and they are generally better quality so once you've named your file picked a location and you have it auto default to Inkscape SVG format at. hit the save button it is now saved we can see our project is now named up here in the top left hand corner so we will know that that has been properly saved anytime you're working on your project if you go back and change it just hit control s on your keyboard and it will update whatever you've done to change your image I'm gonna go now to Cricut Design Space I'm gonna start a new project here just open up a new canvas and I'm going to go over to the upload button. I'm going to click on upload image. I'm going to browse my computer. It's going to go to recent mermaid tail project. Okay, so here we go. It just imported and now I'm going to save that. I'm going to click on it and then insert it into my canvas. It will tell me that it's been successfully uploaded, but we can see here it's not appearing even though it's in our layers panel. If this happens to you, this is just because it is not um, up in the far left hand corner of our canvas. It's floating somewhere down here in kind of a void. So if this happens to you, click the more right here on the right hand side in the edit bar and we can see the position of our image is all the way down on negative 46 on our margins here. So just change that to zero and your image will jump right up there for you. Okay. So if that happens to you and it does sometimes when you're doing your own SVGs and importing them, then just do that little trick and it'll pop right up there for you and you'll be able to find your image. Okay, and so now we can ungroup these in our layers panel and we can move them um, however we want. We can scale them. If we want to use our contour button and come in here and we want to hide certain pieces that we don't want to cut out, we can use that contour button. So it's a completely, um, it's completely the same type of SVG that anyone else would use or you would find in Cricut Design Space to use and you just made this yourself by converting an image to an SVG. So this is a very simple, simple example. We did only very simple colors and there was nothing too complex there. I want to show you now a slightly more complex example because you want to know, I want you to know how to um, sort of clean an image up if it's not as simple as this image. Okay.